What's up guys, I'm Joel Dodge, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to record your electric guitar on your iPad through Bias Effects. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so a few things I just wanted to say before we actually dive into the video is I'm recording through my Focusrite, even though I would recommend recording through a Jam Plus. I'm doing this so you can see my mouse on the screen. I'm recording my Gibson SG. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. For this setup, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is come in and uh, turn on bias effects. I find that it works better if you've already launched uh, bias effects. And then you're gonna come into Cubasis. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I wanted to say is that this might actually work on your iPhone now. As of like me shooting this video, I've, I don't have Cubasis 3, so I can't use Cubasis on my iPhone. So I don't know if it actually works or not, but bias effects works great on your iPhone. I just don't know if you can actually do this. Um, maybe somebody in the comments that has that setup could, uh, let us know if it works. Um, anyway, that being said, I'm going to show you how to do it on your iPad. So the first thing you're going to do, so this is a new project that I started for today. Um, and I just recorded a backing track. Um, I actually made this in Beatmaker 3. Um, I'll be doing some tutorials on that in the future. Um, but first thing you're going to do to set up your electric guitar is you're going to go to, actually, before you go to routing, you make a new track. So this is our new track. And, and then you come, once you're in your new track, you click routing and then you click, um, you click on mono input right here. What you're going to do is come to inner app and then, and then you click on bias effects and now you're going to be hearing this in Cubasis. So I already have all the settings, something you're going to want to do at this point, if you haven't already is change your beat, uh, your beats per minute so that your all your time based effects will be in time. Um, our project is in 160. I didn't want the delays to be that fast, so I set it to 80. Anyway, let's go. Which 80 is half 160? Got you guys. <laughs> anyway, um, the next thing you're gonna want to do is and. I don't always do this, but just so you guys know how to, you can actually set it up to record a clean signal straight from your interface also. And the reason you might want to do this is just say if you wanted to add the effects after, because you can also do that. Um, so we made this track and this one is coming in from number one on the interface. This one is coming in from, uh, through bias effects. So when we start recording, it's gonna record both of these into it. Um, and to make sure you're recording both, you wanna click this red button on wh whichever track isn't highlighted. So because this one's highlighted, it's gonna default record there. Um, to make sure it's recording on both, you click this. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that this little blue button is pressed, whichever one you want to actually hear. So I wanna hear the one that's coming through bias effects so I can hear what it sounds like with all the effects and everything. Um, okay, so now that we got all that set up, we're ready to start recording. I'm gonna put the metronome on just to, just to make sure I have that extra thing keeping me in time. Um, and the way I have Cubase is set up right now, it's gonna count eight times and then the track is gonna start. Let's do this. Hopefully I play the part well. <laughs> So we got the part, and as you can see, it recorded in both of these. When it comes through bias effects, it always shows that it's panned, but um, but when you listen to it, it's it, it is just right in the middle. Um, I'm not sure why it does that. Um, so let's go ahead and solo this so we can just hear 
what I just recorded. Okay. So that's that one. And then this is just, um, just the dry signal. So, so that's how you like bare bones, like you, you record on here. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to dig in a little deeper just to give you all some more tips on recording your electric with this setup. So I'm actually going to make a few more tracks here. Um, and what I like to do, I'm going to show you all exactly how I typically do my setup. So we're going to unmute everything. We're going to keep this one muted and I'm not going to be recording, um, just the raw signal anymore. What I like to do is keep this one as the track that I'm recording from bias effects. And then I'll, I'll make like, um, so this is going to be, so guitar one, I'm going to make guitar one. We're going to do guitar two. So that's guitar two. And then I'm going to have a lead channel. Um, something like this is how I'm going to do it because I like to, I like to be able to pan the rhythm guitar parts and then have the lead just sitting right in the middle. The reason I make separate tracks for those is what I do is I just bring, I bring them, I, I just drag that stuff down and, um, let's see, we're going to chop this just so that you don't have like all the extra noise that bias effects makes when it sends the signal. And we're going to also, um, shorten this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record that again and set these up as rhythm guitar parts. So I didn't necessarily do the best job of getting it like perfectly in time with each other. Um, but of course, like if I was really trying to make this a song, I would come back and like do that over a few times. The reason I like to do this is I'm just going to show y'all, um, is I like to pan them and it makes, it makes the rhythm guitar parts sound like so much, so much bigger. And, uh, anyway, I think, I think that the video is only going to record that in mono. So you might not even hear the effects of that, but I'm just, I just wanted to show you guys, if you're going to record rhythm guitar parts, it's just, it's going to feel a lot more cool if you do it like this. So I'm just going to put this looping and like recording and I'm just going to like fiddle around a little bit on the electric. So when you have it set up in this setting, when you set your right and left here, it's just going to keep recording over and over and you'll have a bunch of different of that moment so I'm just gonna get rid of these extra ones um, I'm just gonna keep that first one um, and what I do with this one what I, what I'll do with this is just put it right here and uh, and basically I just leave that one I'm gonna leave that one right in the middle and then you have the rhythms on the sides and I feel like it's it makes for a really sounding guitar setup. Is, is you actually want to click on the insert effects and what you would do is you would come here, click audio units, um, or not audio units, inter app audio, and you'd click bias effects. Um, and it had an error so you would have to do this separately because it's not going to be able to have two iterations of it like this at the same time. But basically you could set bias effects as like, um, 
what do you call it as a as an effect on your clean signal if you wanted to do it that way um and that that way is going to give you a little more control of everything afterwards um i personally like to just record it straight through bias effects i feel like it saves time i'm not the kind of person to go in and like uh re keep readjusting things but i know a lot of people like that kind of thing anyway guys uh that's it for this tutorial if you want to see some of my other bias effects tutorials, I'll show you how to set up your board and to connect a blue rig, um, a blue board. Um, so you can definitely check those out. I'll have those linked um, at the end of this video. But that's it, guys. As always, die empty. I'll catch you in the next one.